So in front of me, I have my favorite pasta shape ever. It's bucatini. So this pasta shape is super famous in Rome. It has a hole down the middle. It's kind of like a drinking straw, which is crazy that anyone could even come up with this, but it exists. And now this pasta shape is famous in Rome because it's used in two pasta dishes there. Uh, one of them being carbonara and the other one being amatriciana. Now, I've been cooking amatriciana for many years. But it wasn't until maybe two or three years ago when I was in Rome for the first time and I sat down to a plate of amatriciana and it was my first pasta dish that night in Rome. And it was served to me with bucatini like this and it was so good. It was better than the ones that I've ever made. And then I realized that they pare it down over there. They keep to the authentic recipe that comes from the town of Amatrice. The only difference being that they use bucatini in Rome, whereas in Amatrice they stick to the spaghetti. Basically in Rome, this consists of like five ingredients. You have the guanciale, which is a pork jowl bacon. Then you have the tomato sauce. And then you have the pepper, the pepperoncino, which is the crushed chili flakes. And then you have the cheese to finish it off. It's so simple. There's nothing else in it. There's no onion, there's no garlic, there's no oregano, there's no basil. This is not like your usual pasta sauce. This is not your out of the jar variety. This is something really special, really simple, really pared down and super, super rustic and super, super unctuous. Now on this channel, you've seen me cook pasta alla gricia before, which is basically a matriciana just without the pepperoncino and the tomato sauce. So oftentimes people kind of refer to pasta alla gricia as the white amatriciana, the Bianca version. But today it's all about the amatriciana, a super simple, very delicious pasta sauce that's perfect for any weeknight. Share this with a loved one, uh, cook it for a date, have it as a family meal. It's super versatile. So let's get started on this Roman classic, Bucatini alla amatriciana. So I started to preheat my pan, but I like to add any of my bacon products to a cold pan because I want to render out the fat slowly and gradually. And especially with guanciale, which is very, very fatty, you want to render it out on like a medium, medium low heat and it'll slowly become crispy. So really the thing with guanciale is just to be patient. And as you can see, I'm not using any olive oil. Some people may like to start off their amatriciana with a little bit of olive oil, but really why? The guanciale has so much fat you don't need to add anything else. And I cut my guanciale into these lardon shape because uh, I like them really chunky and unctuous like this. There's no reason to chop it fine or cut it into any smaller than, than these long matchstick shapes. And uh, interestingly, in, in Rome, when I stayed there last year, uh, I bought guanciale that was already cut up into this shape and it came in this nice little box it was handy, it was resealable, so I didn't have to use all of it at once. I can just put it back in the fridge. And uh, I was making uh, these dishes in my, in my little rental apartment very happily with the pre-cut guanciale. And I'm using 28 ounces of these whole peeled plum tomatoes. Usually I would like to use crushed tomatoes, but I couldn't find that. So I'm just gonna crush it with a fork. So as you can see, the guanciale has let out a lot of fat and it's starting to become really crispy. So I like my guanciale kind of unctuous where the fat is still a little chewy and uh, I like it to cook in the sauce so I don't remove any of it to have like a crispy topping or anything like that. But if that's something that you like, you could do. But at this point, I'm gonna add the chili flakes and the black pepper. Okay, literally that cooks up in like 30 seconds. And now I'm gonna add the tomatoes. I'm gonna raise the heat just a little bit so I can cook down the tomatoes. I'm gonna get out the fork and crush it a little more. It's nice to have that variety in the tomato sauce to have some chunky bits, some smooth sauce. And as soon as the sauce starts to sputter a little bit, then I'm gonna start cooking the bucatini. 
So I'm gonna add a lot of salt, because you want your pasta water to taste of the sea. And we're not putting any salt in the sauce itself because guanciale and pecorino are both very salty. I'm gonna add my bucatini. Eventually it'll go in. <laughs> and I am gonna cover this even though usually I don't cover pasta, but in this case my uh, stove top is a little weak, so I'm gonna cover it because it'll bring it up to a boil faster. So my pasta is done and my sauce is nice and thick as you can see. So I'm gonna add the pasta to the sauce so that it continues cooking in the sauce. I'm gonna add just a little bit of pasta water, no more than a ladle full. I'm gonna turn off the heat. And I'm gonna add the cheese off the heat. So I would say, I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of this grated pecorino. Now I made this with 12 ounces of bucatini. I've made this recipe with, uh, with a full pound, with 16 ounces of bucatini, but when I was in Rome, I noticed they really like to serve this very, very saucy. So I decided, okay, let me cut back on the amount of pasta because I want mine to be saucy, just like the one in Rome. But by all means, if you like to have more pasta and less sauce, and then you can add more bucatini. Okay, so I'm gonna serve up a nice portion of this. And this is one of those pasta shapes that's so wild, but I love it. some of that sauce with the guanciale pieces. You cannot skip the guanciale pieces. And of course, the gilding of the lily is pecorino. And now is the moment of glory. This is such a beautiful, unctuous, mouth-watering sauce and it is summoning me right now, so I'm going in. And this playful bucatini, I just love this. It's the kind of pasta that wants to whip you in the face, but you just gotta go for it. And this is the kind of pasta where a bib might be necessary, but it's so worth all the splatter marks that you're gonna get on your shirt. And the pasta itself is just so pleasurable, nice and chewy, wriggly, and then of course the guanciale, that, that flavor, the fat is just so flavorful. I just got a really good piece of the guanciale. So, so unctuous. And it's kind of crazy that you have this pasta sauce that has no garlic, has no onion, and yet it's so packed with flavor. <laughs> Oops. The tomato sauce is just so nice and sweet. These um, plum tomatoes, these San Marzano tomatoes are made for this kind of recipe. I think this is one of those pasta dishes that speaks for itself because no matter who you're feeding, you're not gonna hear from them until they finish this dish because you don't wanna stop to talk you just want to eat it. You want to bury your face in this pasta, pretty much. So I hope you try this Roman classic, my favorite, Bucatini alla Matticiana. Let me know what you think of my recipe, which is linked in the description below. And as always, thank you again for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to help my channel grow.